Okay, guys, let's take a look at leak code 1178, number of valid words for each puzzle. So the prompt is we are given a list of words and we're given a list of puzzles. And for each puzzle, we're going to output one number for each puzzle. And uh, what that number is going to be uh, re representative of is the total number of words which meet the conditions for that specific puzzle. And the two conditions are uh, the word must contain the first letter of puzzle. So, f so if you look at this puzzle, the first letter is A. So in order to be considered valid, the first condition is, is that the word over here in this list must contain an A. And also the second condition is that for each letter in word, that letter is also in puzzle. So for something to be valid for aboveies, the word in this list must con... Um, or, or yeah, so, so like A, S, A, S, both A and S must be in aboveies, uh, which is not true. For, for able to be considered a valid word, um, A, B, L, and E must all also be in aboveies, and that's not true. Right, so I think the only one that worked for aboveies was A, 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 because A is, all, all four letters A are in aboveies. So <clears throat> what's, what's the naive approach? The, the naive approach is just for each puzzle, um, you would just go through each of the words again um, and check if those two conditions are met. So that's n squared time. So will that work? Um, I don't believe that's going to work because uh, our time constraints are 10 to the fifth. So usually when something's 10 to the fifth, uh, it's not going to be able to pass n squared. So what's another approach that we can take? Um, it's probably not that intuitive, but uh, the approach is we're going to first create a frequency tuple slash count slash bitmask. Uh, I'll kind of explain the frequency count and then how you can turn it into a bitmask. But, but basically you'll have a frequency tuple, uh, a tuple, a 26, um, a 26 index tuple that, you know, stores the number of frequencies of each character. Um, and You'll, you'll, you'll generate that tuple for each of these words and then you'll, you'll go through each puzzle and you'll create all the possible subsequences slash subsets for each puzzle. And the reason this is not gonna time out is because the, the max length of a puzzle is seven. So this will never grow. Uh, so if you, if you wanna generate all the subsets for something of length seven, that's two to the seventh, right? So two to the seventh is 128. So we can actually treat 128 as a constant. So if we look at that, then it'll be, so for each puzzle, we'll have to do 128. Uh, and then the length of the puzzles is 10 to the fourth. So our time complexity will look like 128 times 10 to the fourth, which will be fast enough to um, solve this problem, uh, which is just, like O of N, I guess, if you will. And um, yeah, so I, let me go to the whiteboard and kind of show you uh, the approach. So let me kind of show you, um, so, so basically we have a list of words, we have a list of puzzles, so word one, word two, word three, blah, 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 puzzle one, puzzle two, blah, 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 okay. So for each word, we're going to go through this list once and we're going to generate the frequency tuple for each word. Uh, so this is just O of n time, right? So you'll have a frequency tuple that looks like... Uh, Jesus, how did I spell that so wrong? So tuple is, you know, the number of A's. Or I guess it'll just be whether or not that A exists or not. It, does, they don't mat it doesn't matter how many times the A is contained in that... Uh, Word, right like you see that four a's doesn't mean you need to have four a's in above ease. as long as there's an a in above ease and vice versa then it's okay so it doesn't really matter the frequency but basically you're, you'll just mark whether or not you have that a or not whether or not you have that b or not whether or not you have that c all the way until z right so that's what this tuple will look like but a better way to do it that will take less space and just be more efficient overall is to use a bit mask um, so in my previous problems, what I um, did was um, 
I, I did bitmask a few bitmask problems in the past uh, two or three videos but I used the bitmask for a different purpose right in those videos I was marking uh, I was marking which indexes or people ID numbers were being used or bike ID or whatever right so I, this was the zeroth index first index second index third index fourth index right that's what this bit uh, this that's what this mask was representing <clears throat> in this case we're just gonna do pretty similar a pretty similar thing except uh, each one is gonna represent a different letter right so um, right so we'll essentially have 26 bits um, this will be as long as 26 blah blah blah, blah. right so that's what this new bit masking is going to represent in this problem. That's how we're going to use the bit mask in this problem. Okay, so once we've created created a bit mask for each of these words, um, you know, we'll have some sort of map that has the the mask, right? The key is the mask, and then the value is the number of times, the number of occurrences of that mask, right? Because we could have multiple words that are the same right this could be these two could be the same word so we should mark that in our mask twice um, because we want to count the total number of words that match that condition so if two words match that condition we should count both of them okay so that's the that's the first step right so we go through this list in o of n time and create the masks create the masks okay <clears throat> second step is we're going to go through each puzzle and we're going to generate all 128 subsets so you know um, as we generate the subsets let's say maybe this subset this subset was valid so we return one here uh, this one wasn't valid so we return zero wasn't valid was valid was valid right so something like that so this so there's three ones so this would return three for this uh, um, puzzle right so it would in, in your final output you would just have a three right so you do the same thing for p2 right you'd go through all 128 subsets subsequences whatever and then count how many were, were valid um, or, or the way you count if it's valid is you just check if that masking for this subset was in your map right because we generated all the masks for all the possible words in word in this word list right so you just check to see if the current masking matches something in the map if it does then that means it was valid okay so let's see how do you how do you generate the subsets that's pretty it's a pretty standard thing uh, you know that's just kind of like a take or don't take uh, kind of approach I guess I can draw it out for uh, a better visual but uh, let's say you have the word phone or something phone uh, pretty much you'll just have some recursive loop or some recursive function going through and you know you'll have a pointer I starting here and you can either take the P or you don't take the P let's say you take it so your your current string is P right let's but we'll, we'll be representing this string as a mask, right? We'll be representing this as a mask. <clears throat> so, you know, you'll have your mask is looking like bit, you know, blah, 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 blah. This is the P position, then blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then let's say now you can either take or don't take this H. Uh, you can either take or don't take this H now. So let's say you don't take it, so your bit stays, your bit mask stays the same. Then you can go here to the O. You can either take it or don't take it. Let's say you take it. Then your O, A B C D E F G A B A B C D E F G H N O P O P. So O would be here. So yeah. Yeah, basically you get the point. So you'll just update the mask um, if you decide to take it, and you'll you won't update the mask if you don't take it, right? So that's just creating subsets is just. Uh, you know, you always have two two possible uh, choices, right? You can either you can either take the p, or you don't take the p. And then the next one, you can either take the h, or you don't take the h, right? Um, all right, so yeah, that's why there's two to the seventh equals one twenty eight different possible subsets, uh, subsequences, right? So yeah. Um, Let's see, I guess I'll go to the code now. Um, oh, one more thing, I guess I should talk about just the general idea behind Bitmask. If you missed my other videos, uh, you should definitely watch those because I explained Bitmask twice already. But uh, for those of you who want to just get a quick reminder of how it works, um, in order to check if a current Bitmask, um, 
to check if a current bitmask um, or no so I guess we're not even checking we're only using the or in this situation in this uh, problem so basically uh, in order to insert a so let's say you have a current bitmask of 0 1 0 0 and you want to insert um, so this will represent that you only have a C right a B C this is what this represents you only have a C uh, and then let's say you want to insert B so you decide to take a B and you want to insert it into this uh, bit mass string right what does the B look like the B representation is 0 0 1 0 right so that's that's what represents B and a way to to figure out how to create this string in the first place is to just do one left shift 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 and then you'll take the order of the current character uh, minus the order of order of a right so the order of B minus the order of a is one right so you do one left shift shift one and you know, so one left shifted by one will give you this, right? So you'll have zero, zero, one, zero. That's what this is, okay? <clears throat> so this, this is going to be your friend. This is the formula you're using to find the uh, um, the bind the, the bit mask string, right? In the other pro in the previous problems for campus bikes and this uh, whatever question, the number of hats, you did like one left shift shift the the bike number or something, right? Um, in this this in this problem the way to um, generate that mask is doing this one left shift shift by order of character minus order of a okay so so now once you have this masking for B the way that you will insert it into this um, bit mask with the C the way you'll combine these two is you'll just or these two together this is the or it's a pipe and so 0 1 0 0 or with 0 0 1 0 that gives you 0 1 1 0 right so now this 0 1 1 0 represents that you have something at a that represents that you have something at C and B okay let's take a look at the code real quick so should be pretty straightforward so the first thing we do is we create a map uh, and then we create all the maskings for each word in this word list right that's what we're, that's what's happening in this first loop here and we add it to a map and then we'll go through for each puzzle for each puzzle we'll generate the 128 different subsequences subsets whatever right so actually one thing to remember is that of the two conditions one of the conditions is that the word must contain the first letter of puzzle so we might as well just start our masking with that first letter of that puzzle right so for for puzzle zero that's above these right so a we should just start the mask with an a um, and same with a Brody's we should start with an a blah, blah blah and same with gas W we should start with a G so I'm just putting that I'm just kind of presetting that mask to have that first character and then also setting the index to be one because we're already processing that first uh, um, <clears throat> that first character right so instead of doing like the take or don't take at the zeroth index we're always just going to take the zeroth index because we need to have it and actually for some reason it doesn't even work if you um if you if you don't take the the zeroth index so um <clears throat> yeah so that's why i have this line here and then you know i go into the actual recursive generating subset this is pretty straightforward it's like a very common leak code prep question where you generate all the subsets um, basically you know you just go through for each uh, index in this string like above these you just have a index and once you reach the end of the index then that you terminate right? so that's what's happening here but also when you reach the end you should also check if that current masking is in your map if it's in your map then return the number of um, the number of words that had that same masking um, and then also here's the take or don't take and then here's the take right if you don't take then you're you just move the index one and don't change the mask if you decide to take it then you know you have to update your mask to insert that that character into your current masking right so that's all I have for this video hope you guys learned something new hope you guys enjoyed it uh,
tell me if you have any feedback for me tell me what questions you want me to answer next and thanks for watching